Hello everybody, I'm running a little behind so I need to grab some extra stuff um, and I need to test the audio and stuff. Let me know how I sound. I'll be on in just a sec. Okie dokie, artichokey. I think that's, I think I got enough stuff. I think I got everything. If I don't, whatever. Hello, everybody. I hope you like the cool backdrop that I made for today. Here, you can kind of see a little bit more. Pretty cool, right? Not bad. All right, so today we are going to be making a fungaloid. This is a fungaloid. I also call them mushroom men or fun guys. <laughs> Um, these are uh, just kind of cute little mushroom people and I actually use these as characters for my tabletop game Stitched uh, which I really really like. Uh, I'll talk about more about Stitched very soon I'm sure. Um, for this pattern, uh, let's see wait I gotta go through the thing. Oh yeah okay so for this pattern here's the things that you're going to need. First off you're going to need the pattern. Um, you can find the pattern boop, 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 right there, clubcrochet.com slash fungaloid. This is going to be a paid pattern, so you'll need either to buy the pattern or you'll need a membership account to access the pattern, um, which we'll talk about the membership stuff in just a sec. 
Uh, this pattern is really cool. I did a lot of um, artwork on it, so it's very... It looks like a book, really. Like, it looks like it should be printed in a book. And maybe someday it will be. That would be very cool. Uh, but, yeah, so it's uh, you can find it at clubcrochet.com slash fungaloid. Uh, you'll also need a few different colors. Um, you'll need the main body color. Here I used beige. This time I'm going to be using this, um, like... It's like a, it kind of looks like Funfetti. Like there's little colors in it. It doesn't come through as much on the camera because the brightness is kind of messing things up. But it's got kind of like some fun colors and stuff in it. And yeah, I really like it. So we're gonna use that for the main color. Um, you'll also need a uh, white for making the brim of the mushroom and the spots, if you're gonna add spots. So I'll have the white yarn right here. Um, I'm going to try adding spots this time. I'm going to make him look somewhat like this guy, except instead of red, I'm going to be using blue today because I think a blue mushroom would be fun. I mean, I have so many different kinds. You can see back here, um, this one's the, my most recent one. Here you can see he's got he's got a little buddy on the side. <laughs> um, and Oh, and you'll need brown for the pants if you want to add pants. Um, uh, and yeah, I think that's it. I also grabbed this red just in case I wanted to change it to red, but I think I'm gonna go with blue. I, I really like, I like this blue a lot, and I don't use it as much as I'd like to. Uh, you'll also need a crochet hook. I'm using a size G, four millimeter crochet hook. Uh, you'll need a pair of scissors, a darning needle. Watch all this get lost in this grass, by the way. Uh, I have a tutorial for how to make this grass if you want to make some grass for yourself as well um hello to the chat hello everybody hello dad my dad is in the chat right now uh he is the four or uh, the 4m metal works that's my dad um let's see what else do you need got darning needle oh you i like using nickels to stuff my characters with at the very bottom it keeps them uh, so they're not too top heavy and they stand up a little better. Um, what else? Okay, yeah. I guess that's it. Now let's talk about while you're grabbing your materials, if you are, um, how you can help support this channel. So there are a few different ways to help support this channel. The first biggest way is to purchase the pattern for this fungaloid pattern or become a member on clubcrochet.com. Memberships get you access to all of my patterns. So all my patterns get access with just one membership. Um, you get a bunch of exclusive patterns, you get early access to future patterns, um, exclusive tutorials, and you even get kits mailed to your door. Every month uh, we do a new kit that gets mailed to your door. This month was for either a turkey or a pigeon. Everybody that was a member this month got to decide if they wanted a turkey or pigeon. Um, I think a lot of them have already arrived, but the patterns aren't done. They're coming out this week. So I'm sorry if the kit, if you have the kit, um, I, the pattern's coming soon. We're also going to be doing some live stream cro crochet alongs with them, so you might want to save the kits for that. Um, next month, we're going to be doing something a little bit more Christmas themed. I'll talk about it a little bit later in the month, though. Uh, t -t 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 yeah, you can get a membership. Membership start at only $5 a month, and you can even get a free trial. So you can just try it out if you want to see if it's something that you're interested in. Uh, t -t 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 what else? What else? Oh, another way you can help support this channel is to purchase merch. Um, I've got t-shirts coming soon, but I also have some pretty cool stickers. I'm working on a new uh, pigeon sticker for the Church of Perch. And we got a little stitched. We got a little professional hooker sticker. I really like that. The other way you can help support is what my dad just did. You can see it right there. Oh, man. It's all messed up. Let's see if I can move it over. Let's see. Which one is it? This one. There we go. Is to super chat. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. I think that was my dad. Yes, it was. Thank you, dad, for super chatting. Um, you can support this channel by doing a little super chat and your message gets shared on screen right there and um, It's just really nice and it's kind of like tipping me and it's really cool and I appreciate you dad uh, He's been supporting me uh, all my life. So he's just keeping that up <laughs> And you guys should help him <laughs> um, Okay, what else what else? I guess that's 
that's just about it. Oh, kits. Um, I actually have kits available for sale for these fungaloids. It comes with uh, all the yarn to make this character right here. Um, all the different yarns, the safety bead eyes, um, some, oh, I forgot. You're also going to need some of this um, black thread for making uh, facial features. So you could find that at, um, uh, oh, you can get kits and it has all the materials with that. I have the kit, there's a link down in the description below to where you can get the kits. Um, let's see what else we got. Super chamber to boogie doo, but about baby. Gaba do baby, ba ba. That's my job of the hut. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get hooking. Hello to the chat, and um, yes, yeah, someone was asking if I had beginner videos. I do. I've got a lot of beginner videos. Um, the easiest way you can find them, which people just mentioned in the chat is by going to club crochet, I mean crocheting101.com. That's a that's a whole series I did where I teach how to crochet for complete beginners. Um if you did not Oh yes, yes. So Willow said you never got to choose this much kit. You know, I emailed you. Um it might be maybe it went to your spam folder. Uh yes. The the deal was basically if you replied to the email with your choice for a pigeon, then you'd get the pigeon. Otherwise, you'd get a turkey. So you're gonna get a turkey. Um, and it's probably gonna be there very soon. Uh, Alicia is having trouble keeping tension on half color changes. I'll, I will definitely help out with that in a little bit once I get to that part. I'm gonna start by just making the arms and I just started with a magic loop. Now I'm not gonna be teaching how to crochet this pattern in this video. So uh, if you want to get the video tutorial for this pattern, it comes with the, the pattern itself. So if you have a membership or you purchase the pattern, it comes with a full length video tutorial where I teach all the different parts. I'd like to come out with a video soon about how to crochet mushrooms in general because I think it's a really cool little technique and you'll kind of see me messing around with it in this video. Uh, but yeah, in this video, I'm not gonna be actively teaching because I wanna talk with the chat. I wanna just hang out and just crochet uh, and not worry about teaching. It's been a stressful week. So I think I'd like to just have a fun hangout sesh and just hanging out with you guys. But I will be happy to help out with um, any little little things like how to keep tension with half color changes, which can be really tricky. So once I get to um, the head, I will, I'll mess around with half color changes there and I can help you out with the tension. It can be tricky though, for sure. Yes, that's true. My dad is saying in chat, even my mom is learning how to crochet right now, which I think is pretty cool. Do you like the background music? I chose forest music from Nintendo games. So if you can figure them out, let me know. Karina, all the way from Russia in the chat. Hey Karina, how you doing? How you doing? My coffee is still, is still kicking in. I can feel it in my eyes. I need to sit back, relax a little bit. Pull that down a little bit more. Do you like my backdrop though? I'm pretty, I thought it would be kind of like a fun little thing to do. I didn't expect it to get so dark though. Like it's kind of hard to see my stitches. They're so bright. Let's see if I can fix that. Oh my gosh, Lizzie. Lizzie just super chatted for 25 euro. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Lizzie. I think that warrants I have a surprise for the halftime show, and I'm wondering if I should pull that now to say thank you to Lizzie or not. All right, just a little sample. Someone's, someone's gonna say thank you to Lizzie real quick, just real quick, and then he'll come back for the halftime show. How do I do this? How do I do this? Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you, Livy. You're amazing. Okay, I'll be back later. <laughs> I 
dropped something, but that's okay. I don't know what I dropped. We'll figure it out. He'll be back a little, little bit later. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. I'll, I will take that as a compliment. Oh, that's right. I was fixing the color. I was fixing the coloring. The lighting is just a little bit, just a little bit harsh. I don't know how to fix it though. Oh, that's that's the wrong camera. That's the problem. I'll switch to that camera. Oh, that's way worse. Did turn this up? Oh no, no, that made it worse too. It's just so like overexposed. Oh well, I'll try to. I hope it's not too bad. I, I mean, it's clearish. It's just this looks white. It's not white. It's not right. <laughs> it I like how uh, Ashley says that right when I put right when I use the puppet. So she's saying I look like a goblin. <laughs> your voice fits your face perfectly. <laughs> Okay. That's pretty. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an arm. So you can see the little thumb. Bloop. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Oh, let me talk about Stitched. Um, uh, Stitched is a tabletop game that I'm designed where um, you make all your pieces from arts and craft. I, I say it's uh, war that you craft. I, I've got a little tagline that goes like, it's the tabletop game that you make from scratch. It's war that you craft. It's stitched. Um, it's a tabletop game where you uh, control a mercenary team of goblins and trolls, orcs, ogres, and fungaloids to uh, defeat each other in combat, complete magic rituals, um, capture the enemy flag. There's a lot of different ways to win. It's kind of like... Um, it's got kind of like a little bit of a chessy kind of feel. It's got kind of like a uh, Warcraft if you've ever played Warcraft before and, um, but it's a lot, it's really simple. It, you just use a playing card to, um, move distance for your character. So you use a playing card to like measure, okay, he moves that far and you use a six out of deck dice to determine like how strong your attack was against another character and um, how much you're defending for things like that it's really cool uh, probably my favorite thing that I've ever made ever 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 uh, and all the rules are actually online right now so you can find them um, well most of the rules there are additional rules like these fungaloids here that come with um, support for the project Yes, Alicia, exactly. Like Warhammer with no paint. Um, you can make your pieces out of anything that you want. I have printable pieces that you can use. Um, you can make them out of clay or origami. I'm working on 3D printed uh, versions of the characters. But my favorite way to make them is to crochet them, obviously. What's really cool is that the base of the character, it's all based on how big the base of your character is. So small characters, are um, one and a half inches in diameter of the base, which is this exactly. That's one and a half inches in diameter. And then big characters are two and a half inches in diameter. So it's I, it's just really cool. Um, and each different character has different abilities. So there's like goblins that are really good at, um, they have greed. So when you mine for gold in the game, and you success, you're successfully mining for gold with a goblin, then you get extra gold because you're a goblin and you're greedy. Um, and what's really cool is these guys, the fungaloids here, have uh, regenerate as their special ability. So they can heal. They can either heal themselves or your, or, um, your teammate. Or you can heal enemy characters. I don't know why you ever would, but you could. And that's their special ability. They're also really smart, so they're good at um, capturing the flag and casting magic spells, things like that. 
It's a really cool game. You can find all the rules by just going to stitchedthegame.com. Here you go. St uh, let's see. How do I do this? H T. I'm going to try to do it really quick here. Boom. Stitched the game dot com. Let's see if that worked. <laughs> no, I was pretty close. I did the spaces though. I couldn't see my what I was typing. Um, ah, Gabrielle. Wow, he's 11 years old and he always wins. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, type one rose. Yes, I do remember you from previous streams. You haven't been here in a sec. Hello and welcome back. I'm working on other games. I think um, I think making tabletop games and board games in general is going to be something that I'm definitely going to start uh, pract or doing more often. Is this Stardew music? It definitely could be. I have no idea. I just looked up uh, forest music for from video games, and it does seem very Stardew Valley-y. One, two, three, four, five. Six. We're making our second arm now. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Sarah. I love that. Dude, what? He's already battling the goblins I made against his Lego. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. That's so cute. Yeah, I'm thinking 3D printed might be really fun. Um, I want to do a Kickstarter for Stitched soon. My idea is I want to make a book, um, and the book would have um, the start of the book would be how to play Stitched. So it'd talk about like what's the game, how how do you play it, what are some extra rules? Because there's like additional rules in the game. Like there's different ways to play it. Sometimes I play it with a castle, so you can destroy the castle instead of capturing the flag. And yeah, so there's extra rules. Uh, that you can use for the game. There's other characters like kobolds and um, dwarves and things like that that I want to add. Um, and then in the book, I also want the second half of the book to be how to make characters. I mean, not second half, the second part of the book to be how to make characters. Um, not not the crochet patterns, but just like here's some tips on here's how to make characters. Here's some tips I've I have for like, you should add weight to the base of them and you should do this, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the <clears throat> then the last part of the book is going to be um, how to crochet fungaloids. So it'll be a, um, uh, piano forte, try not to bugger up the chat too much there. That's a, I don't know what you're trying to say there, but it's very large and in charge you're kind of taking up the chat there so be careful um but yeah what was i saying uh da, 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 da. oh yeah so the second half would be how to um how to crochet stitch so it'd be like all the patterns uh, each of them with little video tutorials and stuff you know like i do and then um and then the then like sprinkled throughout the book would be little lore. So it'd be like, here's what the goblins think their god is. And here's um, here's what fungaloids, uh, like here's how fungaloids are born or stuff like that. Like just a little bit of, um, uh, <laughs> I'm not, I don't have Roblox. I, I, yeah, I just, I don't play Roblox. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so the idea is going to be that it's going to be a uh, a book, and then also I want to have different kits available for the Kickstarter. Like, you could get the crochet kit, which comes with all the materials to make two teams of characters. Um, you could get the 3D printed kit, which either comes with the models, so you can 3D print it yourself, or you could buy the 3D printed versions from us, and you could paint them yourself. Um, and then I want to have a cutout version of the game so you can like, you know, yeah, that's my idea. It's pretty intense. Um, I've been really trying to think it through, uh, the, 
over the past few weeks. I would really like to do that Kickstarter in the new year, uh, but we'll see what happens. Um, I really need to get my butt in gear for it. Last time I ran a Kickstarter, it was successful, but it was kind of really stressful. It was for um, the Crocheting 101, uh, which I talked about earlier, my How to Crochet series. Don't I have this conversation? Oh, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, I think Stitched is really, really cool and deserves a little bit more attention. So in January, regardless of if I do that Kickstarter or not, I definitely am gonna be coming out with future uh, more patterns. Like how to crochet the relic for Stitched or how to make some more characters and that puppet that you saw earlier was made in preparation for all this too I want to have a um, I want to start doing live streams for stitched and I want to have him be the host of the live stream so he'll be like here's the game and here's the uh, the players that are playing today and um, and then do a halftime show and stuff like that I got all these plans for it I just love that game so much all right, so we got our arms done. And now we get to actually start working on the the body of our guy. Um, and we're gonna start with this blue. And then the body, I do something really weird with it, where I do something called a split. It's where you um, pull through with two different kinds of yarn. And the reason you do that for this is so you can make the mushroom cap in one piece so you don't have to sew anything together. It's just all made together. Um, so let me see here. We'll just do... We'll start with the magic loop. And... Oh, I need to switch to the next part. Oh, and the other thing about the the top of the head is that you can choose to use uh, to add um, spot like dots or not using um, bobble stitches so I'm gonna try adding bobble stitch dots today I think I'm gonna use two double crochets together for a bobble stitch uh, if you have been following my stuff before you'll know that I usually use like a three double crochet bobble stitch together um, but I think I think using two will be a little better. So it's gonna be less like a bobble stitch and more like a, just two double crochets together. Monty asks, when you make the mushroom top for the fungaloids, they always Okay, the chat needs to chill out. Everybody chill out in the chat for just a sec. Um, piano, Forte, uh, I totally get it, man. I, you're, you're, you're good. Don't worry about it. You're not doing anything bad. You, did, you just wanted to play Roblox, and that's fine. I'm just not really interested in playing Roblox personally. I tried it, and I just really wasn't into it. Um, but that's okay. And if anybody wants to play that with you in the chat, that's cool too. Um, yeah. Just everybody be nice to each other, please. <laughs> that's that's my only that's my only request. Um, okay, one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Okay, so where was that other? Oh, Monty. Monty asked, uh, when making the mushroom tops, they always come out wonky and janky for you. What do you mean by wonky and janky? I'm guessing that. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering what you mean by wonky and janky. I'm going to just get on to the next part here. I'll just keep crocheting around. But I think what might help is the splitting. If I show you how I split a little bit, that might help out. Oh, wait. I don't need to go around that just yet. I like this song a lot. Okay, we're gonna start adding some dots now. Uh-oh. Well, 
Let's hope that doesn't come undone because I just broke my yard. <laughs> Maybe I should, I'm just going to start this over because I'm afraid it's going to come apart. When the end of your yarn is really close to the center of the magic loop, it can come undone really easily, and that's really scared. That's really scary. Lopsided and has to step, has a step look to it where it joins up. Oh, okay. So it's like this, like um, where you connect it. It's very, it's very clear, kind of like that. I mean, like it's not that clear, but you can kind of see that's where the end is. So you're saying like it, it jumps in. Okay, I'll show you how to fix that once I get to that part. <laughs> you made a sun hat. Kind of love it, not going to lie. Elizabeth, I did see your comment, but I must have missed it. Oh. How I make the glasses. You know what? That's a great... Man, yeah, there's a lot. The chat is going nutso. By the way, hello. We got 90 people watching. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> yes, type one rose. Everybody should be nice to each other in the church of perch. <laughs> um, uh, da, 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 da. Yes, I will. I'll tell you what. We'll add glasses to this guy, and I will show you how to make glasses, Elizabeth. I've got to do a tutorial video for video for that in the future though. I want to do a tutorial video. Man, I want to do like a million tutorial videos. So I've got to like, I just got to start doing it. It's been a very busy and anxiety filled uh, trip for pretty much all Americans. So if you are also in America, uh, I feel you. It's been a really long week. I know it has for me, and I'm sure it has for everybody else. Hello from Denmark. How cool. Jules knows, Jules knows, Denmark is Danish, right? Jules knows a little bit of Danish. She knows how to say, um, the bird flies over the water and the fish swims under the bridge or something. I don't know. She knows, like, really weird. She used to date a Danish guy, so she knows, like, all these weird little Danish phrases. <laughs> Moose gal. Oh, great question. What a great question. Do you need to draw and be good at math to design your own amigurumi patterns? No. Uh, I don't think you do. Um, you definitely don't need to be good at drawing. Drawing is just... Um, Drawing is nice to get like an idea of what you want to make, but honestly, you don't need to make a good drawing because the final product isn't a drawing anyhow. It's, it's a crocheted thing. So all that you really need to use drawing for is to get a good idea of the different parts of what ami of your amigurumi that you're going to be putting together. So if you want to make like if you do a drawing of like a little monster, you want to be able to use that drawing to segment your crochet into different pieces. So you want to make, oh, okay, I see now I need a nose here and I need arms here. It just gives you a good idea, but it's not necessary in any way. Um, I do most of my patterns without using, without drawing them at all. But uh, sometimes I do draw them because it can be fun. It gives, it brings out ideas that I didn't have before. Um, you're going to notice as I'm going here that I'm just like randomly putting spots on it. And that's basically how you do the spots in this. You just replace your single crochet stitches every so often with bobble stitches. And you just try to spread them out a little bit to give them a little bit of um, like so they're there, but they're not like too bunched together. Um, and then the other question was math. Do you have to be good at math for patterns? No. The only thing that you really, I mean, it's nice, you know, being good at math is would be nice for patterns. But when I say being good at math, like, I just mean being able to do simple uh, multiplication or addition. Like, all my patterns have a very even work to them. So, like, all the increases will go um, in the same spots and stuff like that. So, it's not necessarily that you need to be good at math. You just need to be good at 
you just need to be able to um, recognize your patterns that's going on. So it's less math and more just like pattern recognition. I hope that helps. Um, I, I would say the best thing I could tell you for getting better at writing your own patterns is to um, just do it a bunch. Just keep doing it over and over. And when you write one pattern, like let's say you make a pattern for, um, let's go with this pigeon for example. When I made this pigeon pattern, the first thing I did was I just crocheted one. I didn't think about the pattern really at all. And then I wrote down what I had done afterwards and I did it again and again and again. I made like 30 pigeons before I decided that this was the for sure finished pattern because it keeps changing. I keep updating it. Um, like these feet were the last thing that I changed. You can see there's three little points there. It used to just be two points. Let's see if I can find one. I'm sure there's one. Oh, here's one. This is one of the first ones I made. So you can see how he's only got two feet there. The top of the nose, I didn't really like how I did that white part. Um, the feet just kind of look like little nubbles. Uh, and the wings were a little bit different too. You can't really tell, but I changed how the wings were made so that they're easier to sew on. But the only reason I was able to go through that much detail and to figure it out was by making it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. That is the biggest part of crocheting amigurumi patterns from, in my opinion, is um, do it, just keep doing it and you get better and better and better and better. Um, yes. Is it, oh, it's a little loud? I'll turn it down just a, just a touch. Sorry. Boom, boom, boom. Where do I buy the yarn? Where do I buy my yarn? I Oh, wait, you know what? Let me get started on this next part and explain this for Monty. Um, because this, this is where the difficulty to making the mushroom cap can come into play. So I'd like to show, um, show you kind of how I do it here. So here I need to change. Hold on, I'm going to cut all these ends a little bit. So they're not in the way. There we go. Um, okay, so here is where I'm going to do that split thing. And here's how I'm going to do it. First, I change to my beige color here. So I'm just going to hold it into place like I normally change colors. I usually just hold it in between the yarn that's on my hook and the yarn attached to my uh, end of my yarn here earned my ball and then I just place my index finger in between. I pinch it down with my right hand and with my left hand I place my index finger in between and I just flip it under like that and I'll yarn over with the new color and pull it through. So you want to change to that color but then you want to pull that loop out like that and then go back into the stitch. So you want to go back under this loop and then into that loop so you're under both those loops again like you never did that single crochet. You just want to pull that loop through and then you want to continue by pulling through the original color too. So now you'll see I got like two these two loops coming out of the same spot. That's exactly what you want because with this top loop we're going to be working into the front loops around and with this this beige loop we're going to be working into the back loops around. So that way it kind of makes it turns our row into two rows at the same time and it makes it so it's easier to um, uh, to make <laughs> or to put together when it comes to um, putting the head to the body. Yeah. Oh man, I'm, I'm flying here. All right. I don't know how to translate. If it's not... I don't know any Russian. I'm sorry, Karina. I can try though, but I'm not very good at Russian. <laughs> no. Da. That's all I know in Russian. What is my favorite yarn for Amy Gurumi? 
as far as brand goes. I am currently using it. My favorite yarn for Amy Groomy is what I'm using right now, which is called um, uh, Lily Sugar and Cream. So that is my personal favorite. Okay, so I just need to increase up slightly. And it is basically, I like using anything that's got 100% cotton. Um, I feel that when I use 100% cotton, specifically worsted weight yarn, I get my best work. I like the stitches a lot. And I like the way that you can kind of mold the, the yarn in different ways with cotton. It's kind of um, like, you know, like, well, that's a bad example, but like this is all made with cotton yarn. And you can kind of like turn it and it holds its shape. Whereas other yarns won't really hold their shape as much like that. I kind of, I really like that about it. And I like how distinct it makes all the stitches. Like it's just, it's so obvious all the where all the stitches are. And I like that a lot. But sometimes I want to use fuzzy yarn that hides my stitches a little bit. Like if I'm making um, a monster with a lot of fur or something like that. Okay, so one, two... Wow. Pianoforte, you play the cello too? Jeez, you're a pro, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I hit, I, I think I hit a, I think I hit someone's comment and by accident. <laughs> there are people from all over the world. That's crazy, man. That's so cool. Elizabeth always finds it too difficult to crochet with lily sugar and cream. That's interesting. Yeah, I could see that because the yarn can sometimes like split into di two different parts. That can make things a little bit more difficult. So as you can see, I didn't really do any white dots on this round. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to make up for that in my next part right here. First off, I'm going to fix these white dots pulling this white loop a little bit, which should tighten them a little bit. I want it to be a little bit tighter. Because it looks less like a dot and more like a triangle right now. Which is kind of cute, actually. But not what I was aiming for. And we're going to put another white dot right here. I love this song. Oh, we have someone else in speaking in Russian in the chat. Hello, Zoe. I know what this song is from. I played this game so many times when I was a kid. Alright, so I'm just at the end of my first part of this round. Cut my white yarn. This is the problem with doing all these white dots is that like you have all these white ends on the inside. Um, honestly, this pattern with the dots specifically can be really difficult. Oh man, there we go. My bad, Sawi. I rocked, I rocked the world. Okay. Let's continue with this beige yarn. Now I'm going to be working into the back loops. Okay, so I, I try to invert it like this. It's kind of hard to see it, but you see, kind of see some of the back loops there. It's easier for me to see, I think. Is this a free pattern? No, it's not. I'm sorry. It's, it's not a free pattern today. Just because this pattern was really, really difficult for me to uh, design. And I'm very proud of it. Not that I'm not proud of the other patterns. It's just this one specifically took a long time. And yeah, I think I want to. I think I want to keep it as a for sale pattern today.
Yeah, so now I'm just crocheting into the back loops of all of my past stitches here. So, Monty, one thing that you might want to try doing is that when you change colors in the beginning of this, to try to avoid making too obvious of a little, see that little, see that little dot right there? That's, that's as pretty much as little as I can possibly get out of uh, when I change colors. Let's see if I can find one on, let's try this guy. Mm. I think it's right there. No, this one's actually really well hidden. Oh, you know what? This one's really well hidden because I did half color changes for all of the head. So that helped hide it. Let's try it. Let's look at this one. Oh, this one's actually pretty well hidden too. Let's just keep going. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just being too hypercritical. How do I make so less tension in the yarn? I try making things and end up giving up. How do I make it less tight and relax? Um, think actively about your stitches as you're making them. Like, a lot of it comes with muscle memory, to be honest, which is which is a terrible answer, but it's the truth. Um, it's just like practice makes perfect. You just get better and better at controlling the tension of your yarn. But for me, I like to create the tension of, of my stitches after the stitch is already made. So like I'll pull this stitch through right here. And if you see, if you look at when I'm doing my stitches, you'll always see me like pull it in a little bit like that. I pull it after I make my stitch like that, then I pull my stitch. And when I'm doing that pull, that's when I'm trying to get the same tension for each stitch. That's how I'm controlling it is after I already have made the stitch. Um, sometimes I'm doing it really tightly. So you just saw I did it again there. Let me watch. I'll just try to be natural with my stitch here and I'll show you how I do it. So it's like I go one and then I'll pull through two. And then after that, you can see me pull it a little tighter. And then I pull that pulls all my stitch a little bit tighter. And I do that after every stitch. It just becomes habit. That's my uh, that's the easiest way, in my opinion, to control your tension. But truly controlling the tension just comes with time, um, just time and practice. I like to to make my tension a little bit tighter at that point and try to keep a looseness prior to when I correct the tension so that there's something to correct. Um, but I, I always kind of think trying to loosen your tension is usually uh, better than trying to um, keep your tension really tight because when you crochet really tightly, it can make things really difficult and frustrating to continue making. All right, so for this round, you can kind of see, it's a little messy, I know, but I just crocheted into the back loops for all those stitches, and now I kind of have two rows here coming, like splitting off, see? These two rows. And so I'm gonna continue working into the beige stitches into these beige rows, and then the blue stitches into these blue rows, and you'll see that this beige one will start to just like kind of come out like that. And then the blue one, I'm gonna fan out. So I'm gonna start like making it bigger and bigger. And then I'm gonna close in the blue by working into the blue stitches and into the beige stitches at the same time. And it closes it in and you don't have to sew anything on, which I really like. Although it can be a little um, complicated but I just hate sewing things together. <laughs> I just hate it. And I also think these are extremely fun for me to make. So I'm just gonna keep going around with this beige yarn for another round of just single crochets. And I wanna do one round of beige for every one round of the top color. But sometimes I don't do that. Sometimes I only do like Sometimes I'll make like three rounds of the top of the mushroom like this. This is a great example. So sometimes I make the top of the mushroom really big by just continually making this big without making these beige stitches longer so that the top is really small, like it's really thin, but really flat. So it makes it kind of like a platform. And that's how you can make different kinds of mushrooms with this pattern. 
You can also not reconnect it in the end, and you can get pattern, you can get stitches that are like, kind of, um, it's like an open mushroom. I actually don't have one with me right now, but there, it, there is a picture of one right here. The brown mushroom there has an open bottom of it. So it's kind of a different kind of mushroom. How do I crochet so smoothly? <gasps> oh my gosh. Abby, I love that idea. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, Zoe asks, how do I crochet so smoothly? I can never be that relaxed. Um, crocheting at this point for me is like second nature. I don't even have to think about it anymore. I just kind of, oh wait, I, won't, I don't want to use this. I want to use this one. Um, it's just muscle memory for me, a lot of this. So I'm just, I just do it a lot. <laughs> I just crochet all the time. I've been crocheting every single day for hours, multiple hours every day of my life since I was in high school. So I'm, I've just been doing a long, a long time. All right, so we're gonna make this another bit bigger. Oh, another thing that helps me personally is being able to, I wanna put, I wanna put a dot right here. Um, is being able to see where my stitches are. And that's also something that comes with time is being able to recognize what stitches, which stitches are which, so you don't really have to count as much. Um, and that helps me, that helps me run a lot more smoothly. Personal. being said I think I might have messed up oh no I didn't I didn't mess up all right there you go have I ever crocheted clothes before yes I have I used to make hats that was like my biggest thing when I first started crocheting is I made beanies um, and I made children's hats. So I made a lot of like monster hats and um, uh, flower hats, stuff like that. Uh, I've made ties before. I've never made a sweater and I've never made, um, I've made socks, but only once because I hated it. And then what else have I made? Let's see, I'm wondering if I should put another, I think I'll put another stitch over here, another white one over there on the other side. Oh, another tip that I have for you is, um, especially for designing amigurumi, is don't stop. Um, a lot of people like get super fed up with their stitches and they're like, ugh, I'm just gonna restart. Um, just like power through and do it again. Uh, well, I mean, if it's a small pattern, if it's a big pattern and you've messed up and you're like crumbs, then yeah, go back and try to fix it. But if you're just making a rough draft and it's like a small pattern, like my little tiny ones here, sometimes I just power through and I make it even though I know it's not gonna be very good because I know I'll learn something by doing that. This song is wild. It's like fun. <laughs> Ooh, tips for sewing Amy Gurumi together. Hey, remind me that when I come to the arms, uh, and I will give you some tips for that. That at that point, because it'll be help. It'll be easier for me to explain when I'm doing that part. You know, I'm still trying to figure out the best ways to hide your colors in stitches. And I've done pretty okay, but like here you can see, look at all of the showing through of that white yarn. That's like just a bummer. It's hard, it's really, really hard to avoid that. Uh, 
What's my my favorite thing that I've ever crocheted? Honestly, that changes week to week. Um, currently, my favorite thing was the puppet that you kind of got a little sneak preview of, and I will show you again after um, I get to the halftime show. Uh, if you are new to these live streams, I have I always do a little halftime show where I show you all the things that I've been working on this week. So during that halftime show, I'll show you my new favorite thing that I have crocheted. But in the past, um, hmm, probably the pigeons. But uh, I don't know. It changed. I mean, like, I don't know. It's always like the newest thing for me. Whatever is the most recent thing that I've made is what I'm really proud of. Like the T-Rexes. Oh, those were so good. Those are so good. If you had all the time in the world, is there a crochet technique slash items you would like to try? Yeah, I'd really like to try making um, mandalas. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Ooh. Um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to try making mandalas, but... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> There's so much, like, fuzz floating around. But I haven't ever really have had the time to work on it. Oh, the coffee snob. Yes, he is great. He's down here, actually. Here, one second. Wow. This guy, Sven, he's missing his coffee cup. I don't know where his coffee cup went. But but Sven is great. He's just amazing. He's just great. I love that I made his... So I made his pants separate, and I actually sewed them on. Usually I make the body as a one thing and I wouldn't do color changes here, but I decided to make the pants separate for him. And I'm really proud of that. I think it looks cool. We'll leave him back there. Oh, wow. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Am I going to be doing some Christmas patterns live on YouTube? Asks Tina. Absolutely. No question in my mind. We're going to be doing a lot of Christmas patterns snowman and santas maybe some reindeer and christmas gifts most definitely we will be doing christmas stuff though maybe we'll even do a santa hat any tips for pattern designers um outside of what i've already kind of talked about um, hmm, let's see. What's another tip I could give you for a pattern designer? Test it with other people. That's a great one. That's a great tip is um, tr let other people test your pattern out because no matter how many times I create a pattern, there's always a mistake. Every time. Uh, if, if I don't let someone else look at it, event like there's just something that I've missed because I've just been too close to the project, you know? I just haven't, um, I'm just too close to it. That's that's the truth. Some, But sometimes you just need an outsider's perspective to see the things that you missed. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna switch, or we're gonna keep going up with the blue yarn now. You can see I keep switching back and forth between this, the mushroom cap, and the bottom part of the mushroom here. See, cause we want the mushroom cap to be probably like the same distance. I'm gonna cut some of these ends; they're a little frustrating for me. Do I pray nitro type? I've never heard of nitro type. I don't know what that is. Um, are there half color changes on the top? Yes, there's half color changes on the last round of this mushroom cap. Um, so let me, I need to do a round, let's see, is 24 the biggest that I make it? Yes, 
So after I need to do one more round here and then I'll do the round where it's all half color changes and I can show you how to do the tension for that. It's a game that you race. Never heard of it. Do I play Pokemon Sword or Shield? Um, we are we played Shield, um, and I started with um, I started with um, I really wanted to start with Grookey, but I started with uh, the the water guy uh, Sableye or. I can't remember what his name was. What's the water one's name? I, I can't remember. The the he's like he's like a salamander and he's like crying. He's always whining. Jules chose the um Jules, Jules chose Grookey, so I didn't want to copy her, and I gave her first choice. But I really liked Grookey a lot. I do not like the bunny. Bunny was. N I didn't like it. Not a fan. I don't know what it was, but I just didn't like him. He was just too, like, samey, sa same, same, you know? They, I feel like they do firefighting types every freaking generation. It's like they have a million firefighting types. They got Incineroar and uh, Blaziken and Infernape. It's like, man. Could you guys relax with the firefighting types for intro characters? It's like they do it every time. Um, yes, you totally could, Monty. Instead of doing bobble stitches, yeah, you absolutely could do um, could do uh, color change spots instead. Yes, we have, there's a tutorial for polka dots. Um, I don't know if it's a free tutorial or if that's a Club Crochet member tutorial, but there is a tutorial out there on the website for dots and spots. Um, maybe I should do another polka dot here, or do you think this is enough? One, two, three. I mean, I think six might be enough. How many did I do in this guy? Six, seven, eight. This guy's got ten. I mean, ten is nice. I don't know. I think I kind of like the amount of spots that I got right now. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. So my yarn is getting all tangled down here. One, two, three. Oh, actually, I do have one more round, so we will add more spots. Right? Oh, no, no, no. This is the last round. Yeah, this is where I'm going to do the half color changes. So now is when I can show you the half color changes. Um, will this be saved? Yes, it will. Yes, I, I will keep this up if you want to rewatch it later. And the chat will be available as well, so you can watch it. It is Sobble. Okay, Sobble. Oh, Chubzilla. Uh, Chubzilla is amazing. That actually isn't my pattern originally. It's designed by another Amigurumi artist uh, that goes by uh, Geeky Hooker. She's amazing. Um, okay, so here is where I'm going to do half color changes. Um, you can kind of see the top of our pattern here has got some of these half color changes in it. Um, but for the start of our half color changes, I'm going to do a um, the the perfect stripe method where if you've seen my video for how to do the perfect stripe that'll help a lot um, but if you haven't here is how I'm gonna do it uh, this is a really useful in my opinion first you uh, finish your last crochet stitch around your new color um, so here's my last crochet stitch I'm gonna pull through with the same color so blue and then in this next stitch I'm going to do a slip stitch with this first color, same color, slip stitch, and then I'm going to change colors, boom, 
I switch under. I always hold my finger in between the two and flip it under. I, I like to always make sure that I flip under in the same direction. That's important. Flip under in the same direction. And then I yarn over with the new color. In this case, it's white. And I'll do a chain with white. Okay. And now I'm just going to do my stitches into my blue places here. But I'm going to make the bottom of the stitch blue and the top of them white. And the first stitch, I'm going to work into the same place where I did that slip stitch. And that makes it so it kind of evenly um, goes up so that it's it's the end of the round is a little bit less noticeable. So that might help you, Monty, with your jogging. You know how you're saying it, it jogs a little bit? That might help a little bit. Um, yeah. So I'm going to start that. And uh, for tension, someone asked uh, about tension for half color changes. It's very important that you try to keep your tension the same as whatever your other stitches are. Just try to keep it similar tension. It's kind of hard to do that because um, uh, when you do half color changes, it just seems like every time you try to crochet with half color changes, my tension gets tighter and tighter. So you just got to make sure to really try to be loosey goosey with it. Um, Elizabeth, this will be saved. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to try to be a little bit loosey goosey here. And then and then once I have my stitches on my crochet hook, that's when I tighten everything to the to the tension that I want. So that's about about the tension I want. It's just enough where it got some wiggle to it. Like if I pulled it really tight there, I can't really move it as much. So I want to have just a little bit of looseness there. And then I'll switch back over to white. Yarn over with white and pull through. And like I was saying before, the really important part, and then now I'm going to pull this blue just a little bit tighter. But like I was saying before, um, I don't, oh, always try to go in the same direction, you know, like that. Boom. Pull through with white. And, and the white ones are the ones that I always have a problem with the tension for, the top of the stitch is always what I have the difficulty with keeping my tension the same for these half color changes. They always seem like they're too tight. Um, so that's where you really need to focus on keeping it loose is the top of the stitches, not the bottom as much. So not the blue, but these white ones I want to keep a little bit looser. But don't overdo it, you know, you don't want it to be too loose. But you can see I'm pulling it. So after I make my stitch, and, you'll, and you're also going to see that the yarn's going to get really, really tangled here. Don't worry about that. We're going to fix it in a sec. Actually, I'm just going to cut the um, the second color here, our beige. I'm just going to cut it right now. And I'm just going to crochet around it again to come back to it. But this way, I can just avoid too much tangle. And you won't even see when I do this anyhow because it'll be on the inside. So it'll just save us some worry. But yeah, after I make that stitch, I'm going to pull the white just a little bit tighter, but I'm definitely going to pull the blue a little bit tighter to try to match the top of the white. Hope that helps. There we go. You can't keep a good grip on both. You lose tension on the color, not on the hook. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so, I mean, I lose my grip all the time and I just come back in. Like, I'll let go like that and then I'll come back and grab it again. And I just try to keep it the same way, but maybe that just comes with time. I don't really know. I haven't really thought enough about that. We're going to do an increase here. So the big thing with these um, mushroom caps is that you want, uh, and this is this is where math comes into the design. This pattern specifically does have a, a decent amount of math that I needed to do. Um, but the big thing is that the mushroom cap needs to be um, the same or double the size as whatever the base stitches on the inside are. So the base stitches are 12 stitches around. So I'm trying to get to 24 stitches around on the mushroom cap. 
And that's important because when, we're, when we decrease down, we need to be able to decrease um, the same amount. And that might also help with your lopsidedness too, Monty. Um, now I'm thinking about it. Hundred people watching. Oh my gosh! Hey, everybody that's watching, if you like this video, um, please give it a like. Uh, that would be really cool. We have eighty-five likes right now, which is amazing. But yeah, it helps. It helps other people see this video, and it helps me understand what um what kind of videos to continue making. So yeah, it helps. I think I'm gonna have to do one or two rounds of the beige. I'm running out of my white yarn, so hopefully we can make it to the end here. And I don't, I usually don't put any bobble stitches into the, to the um, board, these, this half color change round. I usually don't do my bobble stitches there. I just find it kind of helps a little bit. Uh oh. My friend just called me. Middle, middle of thing. I gotta make sure he doesn't call me again. There we go. All right. That's my friend that actually plays stitched with me all the time. He's my stitched buddy, Emilio. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. Jennifer, I'll see you in a sec. Um, Julia Crafting Girl, did I see your question? Now I will scroll up and find it. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh. Nope, I saw your last thing where you said, did you see my question though? Oh, there we go. You're trying to how to you're trying to figure out how to make a dress with splitting on your patterns. Any tips? Um, yes, I do that. Uh, I use the splitting for some dresses like this. Oh, the dude, it was my friend Emilio. He's the guy that plays stitched with me all the time. Um, so here you can see I did the split for the dress for the bottom of uh, Princess Zelda here. And um, basically the, the, be the main tip that I have for if you're going to use splitting to make a dress is um, make sure to uh, to end your split with a um, by connecting to the first one. So like um, by slip stitching to the first stitch that you made. I'll show you when I get to the end of this round. Um, but it's that's my main tip there. Also, I discovered something recently. I'll I'll show you after I make this mushroom cap. And I gotta make glasses for it too. Can't forget about that. One, two. Three. The dude on the live stream, Louie. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> yes, yes, what Ellie said. Keep the comments nice, please. Keep the chat cool and chill. All right, so, so what I meant uh, to the person that asked about the dress question, what I meant about um, ending the color changes correctly is that when I get to the end here you'll see first off use that slip stitch thing that I did in the beginning here make sure to do that slip stitch thing too you know right there 
to, to the perfect stripes. You can find my tutorial for this by just going to clubcrochet.com slash stripes. It'll help out. Um, but here I'm at the end of my round. Look at all these, look at all these pieces there. And um, what I like to do is to slip stitch into that first half color change one that we made right there or whatever you do for your split. It doesn't have to be a, a half color change, but slip stitch into that one and that'll help you um, to get a uh, to get a nice ending so that you it has a hard time telling. See, I didn't do it here. This is a great example. Let me, I gotta give you some shade there so you can kind of see it a little bit more. So I didn't do that slip stitch thing on the bottom of Zelda here and you can see how it kind of pulls it in like that. It just looks lame, honestly. It just doesn't look good. Um, so it's best to do a slip stitch and then hide that end in. Um, okay. Now I forget how to end this. Ah, yes, yes, I remember. Okay, so we need to come back to this. I can actually cut our blue yarn here. I'm gonna leave um, a little bit of an end like about that long. And you can see like super tangled up there, but all I need to do is actually pull the blue yarn out since I cut it and it just pulls it out. Hopefully I have enough white yarn to do our next round. I don't know if I will though. Look at that, there, there's like barely any left. I might need to pull some other white yarn. But in the meantime, before we get to that, I need to do um, more of these inside stitches. So I'm just gonna pull it open like this back to my inside stitches here and then continue crocheting around now we're gonna need to re-add our yarn to it because I cut it earlier to make it a little easier for me so let's have to re-add it to it uh, what is the church of perch yeah perch is something that a bird like that's how a bird like sits on something he perches on something so we are the the the, <laughs> the church of perch is a definitely not a cult it's not a cult. <laughs> no, it's just like this silly thing that we we do. Oopsies. Let's try that again. It's just a silly like little um, joke, I guess. It's kind of like a or m memeing it. I'm I'm trying to make um get some Church of Perch stickers made because I think it'd be funny or a T-shirt maybe. You can see how messy it gets on the inside of these. So, but that's on the inside, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I reconnected my beige yarn here. Now, how many rounds do I have to do? You wanna do the same amount of rounds on the inside as you have on the top here. So we have, let's see, one, two, three. It looks like only four rounds. So I only need to do one round more. It's already had three. Sure it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so there are my four rounds. Now is the super fun part of this pattern. I'm gonna pull this inside out like that. Make sure to keep the blue yarn on the inside here. So I'm just gonna like wrap it around like that. Keep that white yarn over there. Okay, so this is my favorite part of this pattern is doing the mushroom cap, like reconnecting the cap of the mushroom. It's just so much fun for me. So I made this stitch up. I call it double crochet reconnect. Um, it's, I, I've never heard of it before. So it's, it's, a, it's a Louis Loops original. But basically you go, um, let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba, you insert into both hook stitches there. And then you yarn over. And then you go only into the front loop of the next stitch on the beige yarn like that. And then you pull a loop through, and then you pull th yarn over and pull through two, and then you yarn over and pull through all the rest of them, like that. And then you just do that all the way around, except in every other stitch, you want to work into the same stitch on the back, on the back loops on the base part. But basically, what I'm doing is I'm connecting the top to the bottom by just crocheting into it. 
So again, uh, and I do have tutorials for this uh, if you purchase the pattern. So it's it's a lot better explained than I'm going to be able to do on this live stream because I thought about it more. But it is very, very fun. I think this is one of the more fun patterns. Although it is difficult. It's not like this, this pattern's not like super duper easy. I would say it's one of the more difficult ones. By the way, if you like this grass right here, um, I also have a tutorial for that. You can find it by just going to clubcrochet.com slash grass. It's called the loop stitch. I think it's called the loop stitch. And uh, it's a really fun way to make grass. It, it basically makes like a little mini rug, but I really like it for grass. And you can stuff the cap filled, but I, I usually like to keep the cap in, uh, hollow. I think it makes it kind of fun. Oh man, I'm not gonna have enough yarn. I'm not gonna have enough yarn. I'm gonna need more white yarn. One second, let me grab some extra white yarn. It's right here, so it's not far away. Look at this big cone. I Well, actually, it's not that big anymore. It was really big. It was like that big, but I use white yarn a lot. Have some coffee. Oh, hello, Sarah. Welcome. <laughs> I thought this was the yarn I was using but I actually just have two balls of the same yarn. I didn't realize that it was, <laughs> that, that I already had one down there. That's why I should put away my yarn when I'm done using it. Okay. Weaving in ends is the worst. I hate doing it all the time. Okay. All right, let's keep rocking and rolling here. And as, as I get closer to the end, um, I might have to uh, add some more white yarn. We're, we're gonna see how far we can get. Aye! Just poked my foot, okay. I probably will have to add more white yarn, realistically. Because I think these double crochet reconnects take a lot of yarn. I don't know, I haven't really tested it though. So here is our chance. But I'm pretty sure we're not gonna make it. We're not even halfway. And we're already almost done, out. So we're gonna have to figure out how to change colors here or add more white yarn. First, let's grab our white yarn. Let's see how we're gonna do this. Let's see how we're gonna change colors. Where's the best place? I think it's like right there probably. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this end, thread on the needle. I'm just gonna go through and then out somewhere on the side here. But I wanna keep it under it. And then I'm gonna crochet around this white yarn just for one or two stitches to keep it into place. And try to hide it as much as I can before I change to it. Uh oh, uh oh, I messed that, I messed something up here. There we go. Oh, oh, that's what I messed up. I'm not supposed to yarn over before I go into the stitch. Yeah, goofball, it's your stitch. Don't you remember? All right. There we go. 
time. There. Two. Okay, now I think I can change colors when I come back to the next one here. In, turn over, go. Boom, and then I'll change over, switch colors. Ba -ba -da -ba. There we go. Fixed it. Gonna make sure to crochet around the tail end to hide it. But that was pretty good, actually. That was a pretty good save. And you see our mushrooms coming together here. Just cut that one close. We don't need that. Okay, sorry. I have not been looking at the chat because this gets a little confusing. Bye, Ashley. If you uh, if I missed that, goodbye. Is this the best way to do it when you run out of yarn? I've done it. Yes, I find that this, the the technique I just did for changing colors, or like uh, for changing to my extra yarn here, is the easiest way to do it and uh, leaves the mo the least noticeable um, end. In my opinion. Yep. Um, type one rose. Uh, thank you for your interest. Message me, please, about uh about moderating. I'm not sure if we need any, but um, that's how that's the best way to do it. Email me at louis at clubcrochet.com. Uh, that's that's the best way. Okay. Let's keep going. Is that only one stitch? That was only one stitch. This is why this pattern can be a little difficult, is it's kind of hard to tell what's going on because, wow, that is really bright though, huh? Can't really see any of it. All right, I'm just turning down the brightness just for this white bit because you couldn't even see the, the detail of the stitches. You can see how cool those stitches looked. I'll turn it back up in just a second, though. This song reminds me of the game um, Kid Chameleon. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that game before, but it's an older game on the Sega Genesis, and I loved that game. That was like one of my favorite games. Basically, you'd get like different masks, You'd collect different masks and it would change your abilities. Oh, I love that game. It was so much fun. I just beat Pikmin this week again. Um, I'm. If you have never heard of the game Pikmin, check it out. It is one of the coolest games ever. I love it. And uh, the third one which is the most recent one, just got re-released on the Switch. And it's a great game. Now, I feel like I'm behind on stitches. I think I messed up somewhere. Where did I mess up? Hmm. I'm not sure. We're going to have to do some... We might have to do some fancy footwork here because I'm pretty sure I messed up somewhere, but I don't know yet. Yeah, I know it's like really dark right now, but it's just so I can get this, this part on camera better. It does sound like Majora's Mask a bit.
Yeah, I think I have one extra stitch here. I don't know where it came from. But for some reason, I got an extra stitch. So we'll, I'll just have to do some like fancy footwork to clean it up. Maybe I'll just work three stitches into this last one here. Alright, so here's our last stitch. I'm just going to work it into the same spot because it's an extra stitch somehow. Alright, there we go. And then how I finish this is I like to, um, well, this is our tail end that we don't really need, so we can just cut that. Actually, we'll just stuff it with that. So cut that close. And then I like to cut the white yarn and just pull it through like that. And then I thread it on a needle. And then I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna hide the end by going around the next stitch like that. And then back into where I came out right there. And then I like to go down and I like to take this last double crochet and connect it to the first double crochet right there. So I connect them by going like this. I go through like part of the double crochet and then through the part of the other one on the other side. Like that. And then we'll just do it one more time at the bottom here. You want to keep it tucked in a little bit. Connect. And then I come out through the bottom right here. And then that way I can work around it. But that might help you, Monty, with uh, hiding the end a little bit. Okay. So now you can see all these little back loops here. And that's what I'm going to work these beige ones into. And you can see how it like really pulled it in. See how it like, it made it just more of a mushroom cap. And now I can, I mean, I could just like cut it here and sew it onto something. Look at my thumb's a mushroom now. But I'm just going to keep crocheting around since we're making a, a fungaloid anyhow. And I can turn the brightness up just a little bit now. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to get to where I will be sewing on the face. And then we'll do our little halftime show. So just a few more rounds of with this beige yarn first. And I think this is our first stitch. Let's count one. Two. I, I want to make sure I have enough stitches here. So one, two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 11, 12. Okay. Huh. I don't know where I messed up then, but somewhere it was messed up. And I'm just crocheting around this tail end for a few little stitches there. And then now I can just, there we go, cut all these white ends closer so that I can make sure that they stuff on the inside there. Okay. Thank you, Type 1 Rose. I'll get back to you ASAP. Yeah, I'm excited to show you. There's a lot because, uh, or I'm sorry. I sometimes I just talk to the chat as if you know which one I'm talking, like who I'm talking to, and it can be kind of confusing. <laughs> um, Monty, uh, yes, I'm very excited to show you the um, the things that I've been working on because last week we did our uh, movie night, so there I didn't do a halftime show during the movie night, so it's kind of like I have two weeks worth of projects to show you. The big one from this week is the really cool one. But I also have some additional burbs to show you. This part can be a little tough like for me to work like this. Oh, dude, Kim. Oh my gosh. Kim, you're crazy. <laughs> 
Kim, you did not have to do that. I appreciate you so, so much though. Kim just came in just to say she couldn't watch this one. There was a car accident and their parked car was hit. And you came into the chat to super chat, even though you're not watching. And just let us know, Kim, I hope everything's okay. I'm so sorry about that. That is what a rough day that is. And thank you so, so much, Kim. Kim, dude, Kim. <laughs> You're so funny. You're like, oh man, my car just got hit. But first things first, I got to jump into Louie's <laughs> live stream and, and super chat him. You're the... I appreciate you very much, and I truly, truly hope for the best for you here, because that sucks. It really sucks when your parked car gets hit by, gets hit too. A husband excurs if you can crochet a side mirror. <sighs> I'll give it a shot. I'll give it. I'll give. I'll give, <laughs> I'll give it a shot. <laughs> oh, what a bummer! What a what a rough Sunday. Well, I hope you're the best, Kim. Thank you so much. All right, so we're just going to keep going around here. You can see how our mushroom tap cap is looking. And what I like to do with the mushroom cap here is I kind of like turn it down a little bit because I don't really like it pointing up like that as much as I like it down. So I kind of tuck the bottom of the mushroom cap under it like that, and it kind of helps it out a little bit. And, and here you can kind of see I got a little bit of a lopsided thing going on right there. And that's because I messed up somewhere and had to put too many stitches in the back. But it, honestly, it doesn't look that bad. What's great about these mushroom guys is like, in my opinion, mess ups. Uh, I mean, in pretty much all my projects, a little mess up really adds a lot of character to your piece. And I know that sounds kind of like, oh, you know, yeah, it adds character to your piece. Um, uh, but it truly does. It really does add a lot of character and it, and it kind of gives them a little bit of individuality in my opinion, especially when it comes to like little things like goblins. Sometimes I, I'll put, um, like stitches, I'll mess up stitches on purpose. Like I'll put a half double crochet instead of a single crochet in just, just one place. Just because it adds a little bit of character, gives them a little bit of a, like, uniqueness. Um, how did I make the glasses for Sven and this little guy? We are going to be making glasses for this guy, so I'll show you then. Uh, but it's actually really, it's pretty easy. But I will be explaining it soon. Dude, Elizabeth, thank you for appreciating. Uh... If you were not here appreciating this, uh, I would be talking to no one. So I, <laughs> I, I just appreciate any anybody like putting attention on uh, to something that I care about so much. It really means a lot. So thank you. All right, so I'm going to be doing. Um, let's see. Where do we want to go from here? So what's kind of cool is you can put these like. See this right here? It's kind of like a little, um, like thin. I don't really know, like flap. I don't really know, but it adds a little bit of character to your piece. Um, it's actually the same thing that I do for the bottom of my pigeons. Here's a, where's the pigeon? Here it is. So you can kind of see, see that? It's like a little edging that I do. It's basically you chain one and then slip stitch one, uh, and it adds a little bit of edging to your piece. So we might add some of that to our piece right here. Um, right now is the time to do it if I want to, or I could do it a little bit later. Maybe we could do, see how I did this edging? I did it like over his eye. I kind of like that. I might, I might do that again because it kind of gives him like a unibrow look to him a little bit.
Let's do one more round of single crochets here. And then, and then make a decision if we want to add a frill early or not. Yes, actually, a crocheted Bob Ross was one of the first patterns we did on Club Crochet. Um, and it is not on the website anymore. Uh, I need to redo it because the reason I stopped is because um, the, the yarn that I used for the Bob Ross uh, was um, discontinued. But it was one of the first things I did on Club Crochet because I'm a huge, huge fan of Bob Ross. So you guys saying that really is awesome. <laughs> I appreciate that. Let's do... Mm, I don't know if I should do a frill or not. Let's do a frill. Let's do a frill. We'll just do one round of frill and then we'll get back to it. So again, so the frill is just chain one, and then I just work into the front loop of the next stitch and do a slip stitch like that. And then I just keep doing that all the way around. And then in the round after, I work into the back loop. Again, I explain this a lot better in the pattern. So if you um, really like the, if you think this is interesting at all, um, purchase the pattern. It's only $3, it's $2.99. Uh, and it comes with a video tutorial and it's very well put together. It's one of my best um, put together patterns, I think, just because of how classy. It looks classy. Wow, you're looking real classy. <laughs> Burnett Pipsqueak yarn. Huh, I'll have to check that out. Whoa, we're over 100 live people on the live stream right now. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, I totally know this song. I don't know what it's from, but I know it for sure. Ooh, what if we add the face like really high up on the body? Because usually I add the face like a little bit lower, but what if his face was like all the way up here? You know, that could be kind of fun. Very unique, unique New York. Um, let's see, should I do one more round of 12? Yeah, yeah, we should, because I did the frill. Okay, so once you do the frill, then you need to work into these back loops. into the stitch, into the round afterwards. And it helps with like, yeah, it's just, that's just how it works. Because if you worked into the frill stitches, the frill would disappear. But it can be kind of hard to get into these back stitches. So I like to point like really far down, kind of helps with that. Uh, was Sven made on a live stream? No, Sven was just like a fun thing. I Sometimes, um, actually, Jules and I talked about this uh, in our podcast. If you haven't checked out the Loop and Pearl podcast, you should check it out. Um, Jules and I started a new podcast where it's basically, it's a knitting and crochet podcast. So we talk about our new projects and um, things we like and dislike. Just like we talk about yarn. I think you'd really enjoy it. Um, our first episode came out a week or so ago, uh, and we will be coming out with another episode this month. Um, you can check it out by just going to the Club Crochet channel. So if you just actually hit my little icon that's below the video here, uh, you can go to my channel and then you can check out the Loop and Pearl podcast. I'd really appreciate you checking it out. But 
the reason I brought it up was because of a reason that I can't remember. Why did I bring that up? There was a, there was a reason though. Shoot, I just straight up don't remember. I do not remember. Okay, so now I'm increasing it up just a little bit here. Yeah, anybody remember why I brought that up? Oh, yes, Sven. Now I remember. Yeah, thank you, Sasha. Um, uh, yeah, so one of the things we were talking about was uh, we call she called it her guilty knit or her um, selfish knit. And they're patterns that uh, or they're, they're things that we make that are just for fun. So, um, I mean, we are knitting and crocheting because we really enjoy it just in general. But sometimes it can be pretty exhausting when everything that I'm making, I'm planning on doing a pattern for or I'm planning on doing a video for or something like that. It could just get kind of exhausting, you know. Uh, so sometimes I need to move on and just make something just because I want to make it. And currently, what I really like doing is, I mean, I've always, sorry, I got a fuzz in my mouth. Uh, I always really like crocheting goblins and orcs and stuff. So this guy is a, just a selfish knit for me. I just really wanted to make an ogre in this green yarn because I really liked it a lot. And um, when I bought the yarn, I brought it home, I put it on the counter and I spilled coffee on it like right away. Uh, and so so I washed it off a little bit or brushed it off and stuff. And I was like, well, whatever I make with this, he's going to have to really be interested in coffee. And that kind of inspired uh, Sven here. He's a little coffee snob. And of course, I had to think about it a lot. What kind of what kind of additions do I want to add to him? Do I want to give him, you know, what kind of hair do I want to give him? And I was like, okay, well, if he's a coffee snob, then he should probably have a man bun. And he definitely should have some glasses, be a little hipster, and some suspenders. It just, like, fueled so much creativity. Just a little thing like that helps a lot in my pieces. Um, let me put him back over here. All right. There we go. Boop, boop. Look at that. My thumb is now a mushroom. If it's perfect on my thumb, I could fill my fingers with mushrooms. <laughs> it's like really tight, actually. All right, so I'm going to kind of fold this in a little bit. And let's see. Do we feel that that's enough? For a halftime show? What do you guys think? One more round? We'll do one more round. And then we'll halftime show it. Because we're about halfway through. I mean, we're probably a little bit further than halfway. Because this is... We're already like two hours in. But... That's okay. Let's just do this last round of just regular single crochets because it's easy and I remember what's going on. This sounds like Pikmin music to me. Hola, Ro 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 Rocio? Did I say that right? Rocio or Rocio? Probably Rocio. Same, Monty. I cannot live without coffee. Not right now. It is a true addiction. Okay, so let's put this guy to the side here and I'll come back to him in just a second. And it's time for the halftime show. I know I'm a beautiful singer, so I know you guys appreciate it. And I actually have a new friend to help introduce the halftime show. So one second. And he's really the the main part of the halftime show here. All right. <clears throat> oh! 
Oh, too close. Hello, everybody. Hi. I'm sorry, I messed up the, uh, I messed up the, the camera a bit. Let me just, there you go. Maybe move it back a little bit. There you go. Hi, everybody. Hello and welcome to the Halftime Show, brought to you by you. If you'd like to help support this channel, there's a few ways you can do so. First off, well, let me, let me just, let me just do this real quick. Let me just do that and then, there, there, now it's just me. Just me and you guys, just us. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do this with this hand, but that's okay. Hello and welcome to the Halftime Show brought to you by you. If you want to help support this channel, there's a few ways you can do so. Um, the first way is to uh, become a Club Corsair member. Um, you can like the video. You can, um, hmm, what else? Do you guys remember? Not very talkative. All right. All right. They're not very talkative. That's fine. That's fine. They don't got to talk too much. Um, yeah, you can help support this channel if you want. My name is your host, uh, Jack Gurgle. I'm Jack Gurgle. Uh, name's Jackery, but you can call me Jack. Um, a lot of people do. Some people call me Gurg. Uh, but yeah, I'm a, I'm, I am a friend of Louie. Yo! <sighs> Isn't he cool? So this is my big project for the week. Let me see if I can get this camera out up a little bit. Give us a little bit of room here. There we go. So this is my newest project. I've been really messing around with puppets. Um, I just love making puppets just in general, but I thought, you know, it's time to make them a little bit more uh, and get my, get my puppet juices a flow in here. So he's pretty simple. You can see his mouth here. Um, he was e really easy, shockingly easy to crochet. Um, I just basically did chains here and skipped stitches. And then I sewed, I made this mouthpiece and then sewed it on. I had to make the mouthpiece in a few different ways. Um, the, the ears and the arms and stuff are all sewn on. I have to add little arm handles for his hands here um, so that I can like control the hands a little bit. But what's really cool I mean, you see a lot of stuffing in here. Let me get some of it out there. So you can see the mouthpiece here. What I, I looked up a lot of different ways to do the mouth because I was having a hard time just like opening and closing it without my thumb attached. And then I tried to just attach something to it to just like make it so my thumb was attached to the bottom like that. Uh, but it, it was even more difficult to open and close. So I found a tutorial online, this puppet maker guy, and what he showed was that if you make a little thumb holder and you glue it to the front of the mouthpiece and you just throw your thumb in there like that, then you can control the mouth a lot easier. And it actually helped a lot. I loved it. Very useful. I, it's a definitely, he's definitely a prototype. First shot here. He is a chubby boy. He's a chubster. So he's, this guy's going to be probably the host of the, stitched live and there's a little there's a little hand thing for my for the top of my hand it like holds my hand down a little bit so that I can open and close the mouth a little bit I gave him some earrings he he definitely needs something else I don't really know what yet I'll probably try making another one this week and next I want to make a troll he is very chubby though so that's why I want to do a troll so I can have the head and the body a little bit more separate um yeah, I like the tongue a lot. I'm really proud of that. So this is the main part of the halftime show. I'm very, very proud of this guy, um, especially for just a first shot. What I did with the mouth too is that I made, um, I made a uh, the, the the a mouthpiece. It's just two pieces of cardboard that are like half half circles of cardboard, and I just taped the half pieces of cardboard together, and then I glued a. Um, a big piece of black felt to the circle, like a circle of black felt onto the mouthpiece. And then I just sewed the felt into the stitches of the mouth. So that's how I made them. That's how I made the mouth. 
I'll definitely come out with a tutorial for how to make puppets sooner or later. Um, and it will be a kit. I'm sure I'm going to do a kit for a puppet. But yeah, this is Jack Gurgle the puppet. The goblin. I'll put him right here for right now. Uh, he doesn't have any feet. Because uh, he doesn't need no feet. Let him sit right there. And other things I've been working on. I have been uh, practicing this turkey pattern because I have to record the video either today or tomorrow. Um, here you can see what the turkey, this is kind of what all the birds look like if you keep the head attached. So this is not a burb. This is a turkey itself. This is a burb. If you have not seen these before, this is the new patterns that are coming out this uh, month. We're doing a bunch of burbs. And so I've been working on a few different kinds of burbs. Um, you might have seen last week I showed a cardinal. Uh, this is the first kind of burb. Let me get that camera a little bit fixed here. It's a little lopsided. There we go. So a cardinal. Boop. Not really a cardinal. He's a boy. So I like the cardinal a lot. Um, but I've been working on a few different kinds. Um, here is the eagle. I think I showed the eagle last week too. So I'd like to come out with a lot of these bird patterns at the same time. Um, here you've obviously seen the pigeon. And um, I made a duck and I showed it last week, but I've redone the duck a little bit so that the bill is a little bit nicer. So. Yeah, and you can see I did color changes in the body. The wings are a little bit different too. Here is what the pigeon wings look like, and here is the duck wings. You can see they're a little bit bigger. Uh, and then the tail is a black tail. And then there's color changes in the body. Here you can see him without his head. Yeah. But the feet and everything, a lot of it's the same, but um, the head and the body and stuff are different. So my plan is I'm going to come out with the... the um, Oh my god, a cyborg duck. I love that idea. So my plan is this month is I'm going to be coming out with um, tutorials for these guys. Um, this is They're both going to be membership exclusive tutorials at first. So if you have a membership on clubcrochet.com, you'll get access to, this, to these patterns. That's the quickest way you're going to get access to these patterns. Um, they're going to be out next week. Uh, I have the rough drafts done. I, I just need to do the video tutorials and I just, it's been a long week. So I'm really sorry that they're taking longer than I expected, but they're coming soon. And then I'm going to continually be coming out with new ones uh, throughout that. So we got Duck, Cardinal, uh, Eagle, and now here are a few other new ones that I've been working on. I don't know if I showed you these guys last week, but I did some hummingbirds. Um, I think this was requested by someone to do hummingbirds. They're pretty cute, and their tail is a little bit different too. You can see it's more like a heart. And he's got different wings too. The wings are actually very similar to the to the turkey wings. I wanted him to have wings that were a little bit more flowy. Um, and and I like what I did with the face here because a lot of a lot of um, hummingbirds have like a very uh, fluorescent neck. So I wanted to kind of put that in this a little bit. I don't love how much it like angles down on one end and doesn't on the other. So I might need to fix that later. But here's one without it. And the beak was actually really cool and easy, so I'm a, I love that. Really proud of the hummingbird. And then the last one, this is definitely a rough draft, not done yet, but it'll give you an idea of my idea for it in the future, is a, an owl. Yeah, so what I did, I gotta shade him a little bit because it, the lighting is so harsh. But, but basically, the wings are very similar but I sewed them on backwards so that they're actually pointed forwards a little bit. So he looks more like a little um, librarian or something. Oops, I need to drop my eyes. And the, the, the face I did a really interesting thing with. It's actually color changes on the face. And then I slip stitched around the color changes to add some, uh, some not detail. Um, yeah, I don't know how to say it. Um, I guess it is detail. There's a word I'm looking for that I can't figure out. Yes, he does definitely look like Blathers. You are totally right, Monty. Um, 
I want to do... I'm thinking of doing a barn owl next. So you might see that next week. Uh, and then obviously all these guys are burbs too. I find... So I've been practicing doing them between burbs and not burbs. You know, like doing this turkey as... Instead of doing it a, as a burb, I'm doing it as like a turkey. Um, the big thing for me is it's a burb. I like making it look like if it's got these little bobble stitch eye things, it's a burb. And if it doesn't, it's a regular bird. So yeah, this guy's a burb. Except for these hummingbirds. These hummingbirds. I love the look of the burbs under the hummingbird because I did them with like black beaks and white yarn. Yeah. So all these tutorials... My plan right now is to do these ones ASAP, so coming out next week, and then I'm going to slowly be coming out with more burbs. Um, I know the Cardinal will be out in uh, December for, you know, because he's kind of a winter bird, uh, and then I'll be doing ducks and stuff like that. All of these will be available with memberships, uh, and I think the only free one is going to end up being the pigeon eventually, but not for a second. I, I think it's going to take me a second to make sure that all the other ones are ready before I come out with the pigeon one. So it'll be out sometime this week or next. I'm not sure. Um, and then I also am working on a tutorial for how to do uh, the uh, bobble stitch eyes. So um, here you can see the bobble stitch eyes on the, the main character, like the main way I do it, just like really simple bobble stitches, and then I just put the eyes into them. But I have a few little tricks that I do with them, so I want to do a tutorial for that. So that's coming out soon too. Uh, and then in that tutorial, I want to talk about how to, um, to customize the eyes a little bit to do like eyelids. Um, here you can see this guy's kind of looks, he's supposed to be like a grumpy pigeon kind of fill in the fill in the place here um, and then the other thing I wanted to do with the bobble stitch eyes is um, I don't have them I don't have one close where is it oh here I mean this guy's not very well made to be honest but it gives you an idea of of the different ways you can use these bobble stitch eyes to do like octopus eyes like that this was a rough draft you can see it kind of looks a little wonky um, and then and then I have one more way I want to try customizing these eyes. So I want to do like a video on how to make these bobble stitch eyes. Uh, but yeah, that's the plan for November. We're also going to be doing a lot of live streams for these burbs. So I think next week I'll be doing, um, uh, I think I'm going to do pigeon next week and then turkey the week after. So that's my plan. But yeah, those are my halftime shows. Uh, I hope you guys like them. Oh, a penguin. Freaking great idea. I love that idea for a penguin. If you guys have any other suggestions for birds. Yeah, Hummingbird will be quick. That, that one's going to come out. Uh, I, I think Hummingbird will be the first one out in the group. Um, other than, well, I don't know. Duck might come out pretty quick too. And then I'm just going to do more. The owl is the most complicated one I've done so far, but I really like it. So I'm thinking, yeah, I think penguins will be really fun. Uh, doing a barn owl would be a lot of fun. But yeah, Church of the Perch. I'm, ju I'm just going. I'm just reading all the comments right now because I wasn't reading the comments. I was just going on and on. And the cyborg duck is such a great idea, Sarah. Um, Yes, and the pattern for... You guys love you guys love Jack Gurgle. I, I love that you love him as much as I love him. I this week I have just been staring at him. I have him in the corner of the room usually and I've just been looking at him and I pick him up every now and then and I just go like I'll just be like, Hello, my name is Jack Gurgle. The intro to Stitched is gonna be like this. It's gonna be like It's the tabletop game that you make from home. It's war that you craft. It's Stitched. Oh wait, no wait. I said that wrong. It's the tabletop game that you make from scratch. It's war that you craft. It's stitched. Because it rhymes. Anyhow. This is my favorite. Swan. Yes. 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 Oh, a peacock. Great idea. Peacock, swans. Oh my gosh. Oh, a puffin, Emily. Emily's even got a puffin as her... 
as their picture. Very cute. Toucan's a great idea also. I love that. I gotta write these down. Um, I'm just gonna write them down on my notes right now so I don't forget them. Okay, so toucan, uh, swan, um, barn owl, because I want to do that. Barn owls are, are probably my one of my favorite birds, except for hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are my favorite. Uh, puffin. I love the puffin idea in a penguin. Um, oh, and a, what was the other one? It was a, um, oh, a peacock. Let's see, what else? Oh, an albatross. Interesting suggestion. A dove. I mean, doves are basically pigeons, right? They're just like white pigeons. Oh, my gosh. I love... Their arch enemies are magic llamas in your store. Sarah, that is so clever. Ooh, a pelican. God, there's so many birds. Ostrich. Ostrich is a great idea. And then, yes, I can't believe I haven't done a chicken yet. Sorry, one second. There we go. Um, okay. How many minutes do you take to make one amigurumi? Asks Diddy Lowly. What a fun name that is, by the way. Diddy Lowly. I like it. Um, it depends. I mean, obviously, it depends on the character. Uh, these pigeons take about... Mm, Half an hour, 45 minutes maybe to make one, which is why I have so many. Um, the more complicated one, <laughs> by the way, you can't see it. Well, maybe you can actually, if I just stretch it out like this. Can you see that? There we go. Barely, you can barely see it. I have this like mic stand here. That's where I keep all my pigeons and birds and stuff. And I keep them, sometimes I have them upside down like this. See, he's... The hummingbirds hanging upside down, so I just like put them on there because they all have magnets in them, so I can just hang them upside down on it. It's the best way for me to store them right now, <laughs> and then I could just tuck it away right here. It's like filled with them, though. I think I've got. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> Need some water. I think I've got like uh, 28 or so. I gave a bunch of them away. My goal is I want to have um, I want to have 30 of them to hide around the city. Um, I'm going to get back to crocheting, by the way. And I'll hide this here. And we'll fix the, let's fix the camera a little bit. It's a little off center here, one second. Sorry. Just need to tighten it a little bit. There we go. I don't know why it's so loose though. One sec. I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't be doing this mid live stream. It's just bugging me. There we go. Okay. There we go. Let's get back to it. All right. Peacock. Yes, yes. Oh, a giant burb. We should totally do a giant burb. That's a great idea. I'll just use some giant yarn for it. That's a really good idea, though. I'm just going to continue on the body here, and we're just going to go ahead and increase up a little bit more. But yes, uh, Diddy. Oh, yeah. What did you ask, Diddy? I'm sorry. I can't remember what you asked. Dog pheasant. Let's 
Oh, how many? Oh, oh yeah, I did answer that. Yes. So yeah. So my plan right now is I want to give a bunch of them to family for Christmas. Uh, so I'm I'm just kind of like stocking up now for that. But I'm also stocking up so that I can hide them around the city. I want to put uh, I want to hide 30 of them somewhere around San Francisco, uh, just all over the city, and um, yeah, just leave them for people to find. I think it'd just be fun. Do you, do I have a pattern for this tree? This guy right here? No, I don't yet, but I should make one. It's It, it was actually not too crazy difficult to make. Um, uh, but I'll add that to the list. Maybe I could do that for like um, Arbor Day or like for um, <clears throat> for uh, what's the, the end of the month uh, or the the Earth Day for like Earth Day maybe. I just realized I need to check something really quick. One second. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Pter pterodactyls totally count as verbs. <laughs> he loves it. That's awesome. Tell your <laughs> tell your husband I say hi, Ellie. Okay, so I've done that. I think I want to add the face in between the um, the frills here. So I'm gonna add another frill on the bottom here, and I want to add the face in between them. So let's do, I'm just gonna do one more round to give their, to give a little bit of room in between frills. This is probably gonna be a pretty tall fungaloid uh, and he will definitely need a name. So later on, don't start spouting names right now, but uh, we'll, I'll take names later. Um, well, actually I might need someone, well, maybe I'll make something for it. Maybe I'll make like a, a Google a Google Doc where everybody can add their names in and then we can vote on it later. Um, someone said, oh, is the tree similar to the bonsai? Uh, somewhat, it's somewhat similar, but the bonsai has pieces that are like sewn on. Whereas the um, this tree is actually, uh, I did a bunch of the branches. Um, so I, I made like two branches that were like basically like cones and then I made a third cone and then I crocheted around the other cones and I sewed the three trees together so that it was like one big bush like one big tree with three different ends and then I did one more of these branches and I sewed the I sewed the fourth branch onto the big stump of trees together and then I did pom-poms for the um the the bushes on on the tree and then i did um there's a hole there's like a a hole in the tree too see you see right here there's a hole and what i did for that was there's actually like a big you can see it on the inside see that little thing right there it's like a big pocket that i sewed into the hole so that i could hide things into in the tree and then i just used this um I don't know, weird cardboard thing to keep the tree in, uh, standing up. There's also this log here. This is a really old one for me, but it's really simple. I basically just left a hole in the center here and then did a, another little piece that I sewed on. And it's just like a big tube that I crocheted. And I did like increases and decreases so that it would, it would act more log-like. But yes, <laughs> I don't want to keep you sane. Man, that's a lot of pressure because <clears throat> I'm insane. So. <laughs> Pterodactyls are classified as flying reptiles. Whereas birds are birds. Interesting. Interesting. I got to do a pterodactyl pattern. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking for it. For my dinos. I got to do more dinos just in general. I want to do an ankylosaur. 
um, and a raptor and stuff like that. So sooner or later, I gotta do those. I also have to work on the the game. Um, if you didn't know yet, I'm working on another board game for my dinosaurs. Um, I'm calling I call it uh, Lava Run. It's basically you control a dinosaur and you're trying to escape a volcano. It's really, really, really cool. It's like, it's even easier than Stitched, um, but the problem with it is Stitched is really cool because you don't need, um, you, you probably have everything to play Stitched at home, whereas the dino game, uh, Lava Run, you need to have, um, you need to um, have cards. So it's got like cards included. So it's less, um, it's less accessible like right away, but it's easier. It's a much easier game. And I think uh, even younger kids can uh, play Lava Run. I think you can probably get like a five-year-old to play Lava Run and, it's, and it'll be successful. It's really, really cool. I'm very excited to share it. I need to start play testing it. I'm waiting for the art. Um, I have a friend, the same guy actually, that did the um, the design for um, this sticker, which is such a cool sticker. Get it now in the shop. I think it's just called the Ogre Crocheting. It's an Ogre Crocheting little goblin with a troll looking on the background. But the same guy that did the art for this is doing the art for my um, for the dino game. And he sent back some stuff. I just have to give him feedback, and it's just been such a busy week that I haven't been able to give them it but my plan right now is I want to get um, that art made so that people can test the game so you can print out the cards for yourself and try to test out the game for yourself um, and then get a bunch of feedback on that before I come out with the game publicly and maybe I'll do a Kickstarter for that too I don't know because I will have to get cards made and a board game made and stuff so it's a, it's a lot of work and obviously I got a lot of a lot of balls in the air. I got to juggle a lot of balls. And I do have a full-time job on top of this. <laughs> a kimono dragon? What's a kim what's the difference between a kimono dragon and a dragon dragon? Is, is a kimono dragon the one with, um, like, no wings? Like, um, like, um, Zelda-style dragon? Is that a kimono dragon? Like a Japanese, Chinese dragon? <laughs> Thank you, Steph. If you like this video, um, again, here's my little my little plea. Please like it. Like the video down below. And subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. Thank you, Jasmine. Katrina's Crochet World. I think I've seen your stuff before, Katrina. Are you the one that asked about the woggles recently let me know all right so i'm gonna add the eyes i dropped my eyes down below but we need to make the eyes um oh and i need to grab stuff for the mouth um and some stuff to make the glasses so i'll be right back give me a second um i just need like like 15 seconds maybe a little longer one second so this is the first thing we need this for the glasses so this is basically just wire here i can show you in there so it's just it's just black wire it's really thin and easy uh easy to bend so you need that for the glasses we also need um, a big crochet hook or something like this um, and you need this so that you have something to bend around when you're making the glasses uh, and then I need some black yarn or black thread. Okay, so the last thing that I needed that I totally forgot is this black thread. This black thread, um, and I want that so that I can sew on a mouth. But that's all you needed. Um, so let's start by adding the eyes. 
Um, and I dropped my eyes. I know I did. I remember hearing it drop. Where? Where'd it go? Oh, there they are. Oh, they're under my feet. Okay. I think this song is from Super Mario um, 3D Land. I really like that game. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some eyes. And I think I'm just gonna add them See, we want. I think I want this to be the front right here, and let's see. Let's go like. Let's try like right where that increases. And how many stitches away do I want it? We want to do the mouth like here-ish. Let's try like here and here. Is that good? I mean, that looks pretty good, I think. And then we could just do the mouth in between. Let's sew on a mouth before I lock these eyes in so that I make sure that the eyes are in a good spot. And I'm gonna do like this cute little, um, like, uwu mouth thing. Cause that's my favorite mouth to do for these um, guys, personally is this this thing right here um like kind of like a cat mouth a little bit so the way i do that is i just come up through one half one bit right here uh oh there we go and then i just go See, it'll be like, like one like that, then two like that. So I like to go all the way across like so. Like just a regular line. That might be too close though. Ah, maybe not. And then I kind of like that, just like a flat mouth though. Kind of cute. And then I'll go up through here. Come on, there we go. So I'm going through the middle of the of a stitch just under that. And I like to come out through the middle of the stitches. It kind of helps a little bit. And then we just, boop. I just go around that. And then up through the center, go around that center. And then down to the corner here and we'll go around this end too I just gotta be sure I don't pull this tail out too much sorry I, I can see the chat moving in the corner of my eye but I just want to make sure I get this right There we go. And then what I do is I just kind of like loosen it a little bit like that. And I give it a little bit of like that. That's pretty good. <laughs> Dang, that was, that was pretty good. Uh, and now I'll just tighten it. And I, I'm not going to tie it too tight because I do want to have like a little bit of a loose factor for the mouth. So I'm just going to tie it. And then I'll, I'll re-loosen it, because you'll see this will probably mess up the mouth a little bit. Like that. Throw this to the side. You'll probably stuff them with it later. Yeah, see how it tightened it up a little bit? So I just want to, like, loosen that up. Like that. Man, that was a good face. I got to say, that's one of the best. Hello from Canada. Hello everybody from Canada. 
Hookers helping hookers. Us hookers gotta stay together. There we go. Oh, that is so freaking cute. Okay. Uh, where do I get the safety bead eyes? I get the safety bead eyes on, um, I personally get them uh, in bulk on like just this weird website. <laughs> it's like, but I get them like thousands and thousands of them sent to me at once. Uh, and then I, uh, I actually sell them on the website. So if you want to get them, I think it's just clubcrochet.com slash eyes is where you can find them. Do we like black, eye black glasses? Yeah, I think black glasses are good, right? Yeah. Okay, so here's how I do the, the glasses. Um, first, we need to find the end, which will be... Where is the end? There it is, right? Yeah, there it is. So we just need to get a little bit of it. So you just need some wire. Um, I like using wire cutters. So I like these, see these pliers here? I like these pliers because they have the little cutter here and it saves my scissors a little bit of trouble. Um, and I'm gonna cut it a little bit. Let's see, I'm gonna follow the end. I'm gonna cut it like right here. See how long that is. I'll probably shorten it. But you can see here, maybe there's like a foot uh, and this is probably way too long, to be honest. But basically, I want to straighten it out as much as I can. This stuff is really nice because it's very easy to bend. So it's very easy to straighten. Um, sometimes I like stronger uh, wire just so that it's, it's a little bit more difficult to bend because um, once I add it to the face, uh, I don't want to mess it up. So, yeah. Uh, and then what you want to do here is how I make glasses. Now I'm gonna do a video tutorial for this later, so I'm not gonna do it super in detail right now, but I'll talk about it a little bit. So um, I gotta remember how I do it though. So I start by going around uh, something like this. Okay, and that makes the gl actual glasses part. That makes like the, the hole for the glasses. And then, um, and then, and then what do I do after that? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so then I take this little tail end here, this end, and I go around like this. Okay, and I point that in, like that. So this is the part that's gonna go into the face. So again, I made the circle, and then with this tail end bit, I went down straight. And then now we wanna do this on the other side. And you wanna leave a little bit of a gap in between the two. Uh, and you want to bend it the same way. So this one went like this. So I think we need to go, yes, we need to go under it. So I'm going to go around it like this. Make another circle. Dude, Katrina! Thank you. Thank you so much, Katrina. Okay, so I made another circle like that. And then we want to go around it again. So I just go around the outside, around the outside, like that. And then back over like that. Oh, I actually did them opposite. So I see, see how I screwed that up? Here. This is important, actually. So I messed up. See, one end goes over, and then the other end goes under. We don't want that. We want it to go the other way around. So I'm going to undo that. A little bit. It's really hard to undo. This, this stuff. This stuff is a little bit better, but it's usually pretty hard to undo. But we want to go other way around, right? Because we want to go like that. So you see, I kind of messed up the circle here. So we can fix that by just putting this end back in like that. So, and then reshaping the circle a little bit. Luckily, this stuff is pretty easy to shape. 
Sometimes this can be easier said than done. And if you want to go around, you can go around multiple times too to make sure that it's in place. So let's go around it one more time just, just because we can. So I'm going to go around it again. And I'm going to go around it again on this side too. Like that. All right, and now we just need to bend it so that we like our shape. So I'm gonna bend it like this. Make it more of a, like I want a little bit of a curve to the bridge of the glasses. That's pretty good. And now I can just cut these two ends somewhat short. You don't need them too short. Like you want them short enough so that when you I'll put these to the side here. But you want it short enough so that when you poke it into the face, it doesn't poke out the back end of it. But usually when I make these glasses, I don't attach them like I do with the arms. I usually add the glasses afterwards and I just poke them through the stuffing. Uh-oh, I screwed up the glass. I screwed up this side a little bit, so let's try to fix it a little bit more. That's pretty good though. And then I'll just poke. <clears throat> I'm not gonna keep this for right now, but for for right now, we'll just poke it where the mouth is, just to see. And it'll go like that. Huh? Pretty good, right? See, and they're both going over. <coughs> Personally, I like making them both go over like that. I think it helps a little bit more. Okay. So we got our glasses. We got our face. I'm gonna bend it just a little bit more down like that. I keep messing the glasses part up though. This is what I mean by using like bendable. If it's too easy to bend, you can mess them up really easy. But yeah, I hope that helps. And we'll, we'll add these later on. So I'll just put them to the side for right now. <coughs> All right, back to crocheting. So now I'm just doing the body. I'm just doing a few rounds between the head and the body. And I'll get to the other end here. I think I need to start doing the legs pretty soon. I think there's three stitches in between the frill and the pants. And actually, um, uh, to the person that was questioning uh, uh, the color half color changes, I'm actually gonna do another round of half color changes in a second. So if you're interested in a little bit more help, I will be able to help you there. Get those little fuzz out of the way. All right, Elizabeth. I'll see you later. Yeah, and I'll do a tutorial for those glasses. Uh, it's I'll do its own video on a white background and stuff to make it a little easier. Um, I'll do that ASAP. Uh, obviously, I have a lot of tutorials that I want to do. So I can only work on so many, but I will work on one. I promise. All right. Wow, Type 1 Rose, you've only been crocheting for four months? Well... Welcome to the best craft you are ever going to learn. In my opinion, I should say. I should be clear. 
Because Jules would say knitting is the best. Uh, really, this last round should have been the half color changes. But... See how this green fuzz is coming off of this the grass? It's coming apart a little bit. I think... Um, so we're going to have the arms sewn on to the side here. That. Yeah, whatever. I'm not going to take it around out then. I was going to make it his body a little bit shorter, but I'm just going to keep going. Whoa, Astra! You've only been crocheting for two or three weeks? Well, jeez, man. <laughs> yeah, it takes, a, it takes a little bit, especially a pattern like this can be a little complicated. So again, I'm going to use that perfect stripe method um, that we talked about earlier, where I just slip stitch, and then I chain one in the new color, and then I single crochet into the same stitch that I slip stitched into, but doing our half color changes. And again, there's a full tutorial for that, so if you want to learn that really, really well, go to clubcrochet.com slash stripes. And I have a video tutorial and a print uh, and a written tutorial with GIFs and everything. I spent a long time on it. I think it's really, really good. So now I'm just doing half color changes for this next part of the body here. <laughs> so I saw someone comment on that ghost pattern that you're talking about, um, saying that they, uh, they really liked using it for SCP-999. Uh, if you guys don't know, SCP, there's this thing called the SCP universe. It's like, um, it's a secret organization that uh, collects and protects like anonymous, anomalous artifacts. So the, it's, it's very science fiction-y. They basically like capture these creatures or things that are supernatural in some way and they explain them. And it's this community of writers and just artists in general that come up with these ideas and they just like fill this community with these creatures and stuff. And it's so cool. It's like, it's very creepy. It's very like scary. Um, but SCP-999 is a creature that is, it's a tickle monster. It's actually the only, it's one of the only good SCPs. There, there's not very many good SCPs out there, but this one is a good one. And it's it's like this orange creature that kind of looks like that ghost pattern, that crocheted ghost that I have. And I just loved it. I, I was like, oh my god, that's so cute. So now I want to make one too. Now I'm going to do the perfect stripe method again here for the second part of the pants. And the only reason I'm really doing that is um, to make it so this stripe really looks clear. But I'm not gonna be doing half color changes for the, anymore. I'm just gonna be doing regular crochets in brown. But I'm still doing that perfect stripe method so that I can make this part of the stripe a little bit clearer. So if you look here, see, I use the perfect stripe here and it kind of makes it a little bit more even of a straight line rather than having a jogging line. Yeah. All right, so now I can just cut this yarn here. Boom. I'm actually gonna come back to this yarn in just a second because I'm gonna use bobble stitches for the feet. D&D &D maps. Hey, dude. Oh my God, that's such a great idea, Gemma. Hair ties, but with the ghosts. That's cute, I like that. Oh, D&D Maps, you're going to have to go back and watch the halftime show. 
You're gonna like the puppet that I made. And my plans for it. And we're gonna do... Hmm. That's where we wanted the ball to stitch. Yeah, bobble, four stitches, and then another bobble. Well, happy National Diabetes Awareness Month. <laughs> I didn't even know Diabetes Awareness had a month. So, now I do. All right, so now I got some feet. And then we got some body pieces in between the feet. He's, yeah, he has got like a bit of a body to him, but I like it. I like that. <clears throat> well, Rebecca, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to keep this video up afterwards too, so you can watch it later. Sometimes where I place the feet on these mushroom dudes changes a little bit. But it's always, I always use four stitches between each foot, but where the feet start sometimes changes based on however I make the body. Although in the pattern, the written pattern, uh, I have a very specific place. I, if I was following the pattern exactly, I'd probably keep the feet in good, have the feet in the same spot. But I changed it a little bit, the body this time. So I had to change where the feet went. Yes, I totally agree, Katrina. Handmade things mean a lot more than bought things, in my opinion. More like humming burbs. Good one. <laughs> uh, so now I'm adding the arms. I like to add pipe cleaners in the arms. You could use wire like I did for the glasses, but I think pipe cleaners are just fine and a little bit easier to handle. I always cut them in half. And then I like cutting the half and half like that. There we go. Straighten that out a little bit. And then I like to fold these in half. And twist them up a little bit. And I like adding pipe cleaners into the arms so that they can be poseable. Like this. <laughs> First light is Astra usually watches video game live streams. I gotta I wanna start doing more video game live streams on my other channel, but I'm so I got too many I got too many things I wanna do. I'm gonna stuff these hands up just a little bit. We need this. I like using a little wooden stick like this. This is actually a crochet hook, but I like using a wooden stick to stuff the hands in a little bit. Okay. 
It's usually a little bit easier because this stuffing stick is a little slippery, so it doesn't really hold on to the stuffing as much. I'll put this like that. Perfect. We're going to put one arm right here. And what I do with this pipe cleaner is I put it in between two different stitches like that. Like that. And then I twist it on the inside to keep it, twist the two ends on the inside to keep it locked into place. When will the next movie night be? Uh, at the end of the month, uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do. I want to do something that has to do with birds. Um, I'm kind of thinking the movie Up would be fun because of Kevin. We could crochet Kevin as a burb. But I'm not totally sure yet. I'm also thinking there's a movie called Spy in Disguise, which is a like there's a pigeon in it. But I haven't fully decided just yet. Okay, so to the person, if you're still here, I'm not sure if you're still watching. Oh, chicken run, that could work. <coughs> I'm not sure if you're still watching, but uh, for sewing pieces together, um, here is some tips for how to sew things together. So I have these two ends here. This is from the very center of my end. I always like to keep that because I like to have two ends when I sew stuff together so that I have something to double knot onto. So I'm going to take the first tail end and I'm going to place it right into the center of where I want something to sewn on. And I want this to go around the pipe cleaner like that. And then I take the other end <coughs> and usually I like to count where I want the stitches first. So I want six stitches um, to be sewn on because if you look at the bottom of our hand here, there's six stitches that I have at the bottom. So I want to make sure that I have the six stitches that I want to work into. So we got one, two, three. We don't want it too far to the side. So I'm going to start here. Whatever stitch you start with is the stitch that I like to end with. And then I come out through wherever the next place is. Okay, so one, two, like that. And then I pull it tight-ish. And then I go down through the next stitch. I always go down through the top of the next stitch and then in through where I came out and then out through where the next stitch on the body is. So like right there. And then I just keep doing that all the way around until I come back around to the other side. <coughs> and again, the first stitch should be your last one. So it kind of gives you a little anchor that you need to work towards. These arms are a little bit different because I've sewn a million of these. So I pretty much know exactly the spots that I like to sew it on. But usually I like to map it out beforehand. <coughs> Christmas tree is a great idea. I think I have fur. Like... I think I have fuzz from this thing <coughs> in my lungs. <sighs> Probably not good for my lungs, but whatever. And then on the inside, I just double knot the two ends together. Just cut it nice and close. And then I, I always like to use this extra ends of stuffing. So I, I always put them to the side and hold on to them so I don't have too much waste. And let's go ahead and stuff this other hand up a little bit. Snowman. Snowman is definitely coming out. I actually have a snowman tutorial video already out. So maybe I'll give it a little bit more attention. There 
go. Yeah, I have like a little miniature snowman tutorial, which I think is perfect. I love that tutorial because I use like a really weird technique for it. There we go. Sew this other arm on. And we're coming down to the end of the video now. Oh, oh, I have one more thing I want to add to the face that I... Oh, wait, never mind. We're using the glasses. I shouldn't do that. I was going to add cheeks, but since we're going to be adding glasses, you won't even be able to see the cheeks anyhow. <coughs> so there's not really any reason to do that. One. Yeah. Hello, Nathan. How are you? Hey, my dad's back. You were teaching, were you teaching someone how to do blacksmithing, dad? So we got the arms almost done here. That's really cool. I, I want to hear more about that later. All right, and I'm just going to double knot these on the inside. And I'll show you that because we added the pipe cleaners into the arms, um, you can make them totally posable. Which, if you've been a fan of my channel for a while, you know that I love doing that. So it's nothing new. But I like to put the pipe cleaners in the arms, so now I can turn them. There we go. This guy's really coming together here. Now, I'm just going to use this, all these little extra ends, and I'm just going to stuff him all the way up to the head with that. And I really want to get all the way up to the top of the head with these ends. Oops, I hit this camera. There we go. And we're going to, I mean, obviously we're going to have to stuff them a lot more, but um, let's do our, let's do one more round of crocheting before I stuff them all the way up. All right. Man, I didn't realize how hungry I was until right now. I just got so hungry so quick. All right. Snowflax. I love making snowflax. All right, so now I've crocheted the bottom a little bit more. So now I can use my stuffing. Whoop. Stuff our guy a little bit more. But we're coming to the end here. And um, here's my last little plea. If you like this video and you want to help support this channel, uh, but you don't want to become a member or anything like that, the best way you could do so is by just liking the video down below. It's just quick, easy. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. And uh, if you do want to go above and beyond and help support my channel even more, uh, become a member. Members get 
a bunch of exclusive access. I spent a lot of time making tutorials for membership. And um, yeah, it's a great way to help support the channel and help me work towards my goal of quitting my full-time job and crocheting as my full-time job. But I'm not, not quite there just yet, but I'd like to get there sooner or later. All right, so I'm on my last round here. And, and I know I've said this a million times, but I do really also want to say thank you guys so much for joining me on a Sunday in crocheting with me. Whether or not you're crocheting or knitting or just just watching. Thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate it a lot. All right, so there's my last stitch. And uh, the other thing that I always like to add to the end here is, first, I, I, you need to make sure that we have a little bit more stuffing for the bottom there. I will have to make some more snow, some snowflakes. I haven't done snowflakes ever, but I know I could. Oh, it's okay, Kat, uh, Katrina. I was just, I was just joking. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so the other thing that I always like to add in at the bottom is I always like to add um, nickels. Now I usually just add one, but I'm gonna add two on this guy because I feel like he's gonna be just a little top heavy. It can be a little difficult to get the nickels in there though but it helps with keeping the weight on the bottom really any kind of heavy coin that you can fit into the bottom of your piece is great there we go yeah see how much it like it helps him stand up all right and now I can just sew it closed and that'll be that One, two, three. Oop. And now I have another. Oh, oh, we forgot to add the, the glasses. The doy. We'll add our glasses too in just a second. That's what's nice about these glasses. You can add them after they're already sewn closed. Oh, I forgot. I have a new way that I like sewing closed. Oh, well. Old habits die hard. Okay. really tight there we go there. and now let's give him his little glasses we're gonna go a little higher I think with the glasses like maybe right there well, that looks a little off-center though maybe we'll go like into the center of that, like right. Oh, that's hard to get into though. Maybe not once I get my needle in there though. But yeah, sometimes I need to like stretch the stitch out by, I, I like to put the needle like almost all the way through till the eye of the needle is there. And then I s twist it and it kind of stretches that spot out a little bit more. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Basically what I'm doing here is I want it to be in a very specific spot. So we're gonna go right there and right there. Twisty, twisty, twisty. And then we'll just take this one right to there and one right to there. We'll see how that works. Might be difficult to get it in though. There we go. And yeah, you just gotta make sure it doesn't stick through the back. I'll fix his mouth a little bit. But there we go. How cute is that? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, all right. Okay, so we do need names. You know, I might just think about some names well here I'll tell you what I'm gonna do real quick real quick oopsies there we go. 
So I'm going to make a Google Sheet that people can add their names to it right now. Yeah, I totally agree. This might be one of the cutest ones yet. Look how cute those glasses are. They're so big. Fungaloid names. And what I'm going to do is... Anyone with the link. I'm making it so... <clears throat> <clears throat> Oopsies. Um, I'm just gonna give it one suggestion like Henry. And make sure not to cover up other people's name suggestions when you're putting your name in. But there, I just put it into the, the um, chat. So it's right there on the chat. I'm also gonna put it into the into the description. There we go. Please do not delete anybody else's name that um, you put in there. Um, and I'm going to choose my top four and put them into a uh, uh, a a poll on YouTube so that you can vote on which name which name you like best. But yes, that's where you can name it. Let's see. We got any names coming in yet? I got a lot of people in here, but no one's named it yet. You should be able to name it. Let's see. Maybe I have to do Oh, oh, here. I fixed it. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. There we go. Okay. There, I fixed it so now you can edit it and you can add your own names. The fourth. I named him Henry the fourth. But you should have access to be able to edit it now. I'm waiting to see if anybody puts their name in. Well, there we go. People are people are changing stuff. Happy face. All right. Cool. Someone added a happy face. Yes. Yeah, just suggest names in there. Mysel. What a great name. Great choice. All right. Well, thank you guys so much again for watching. Uh, and I will see you guys next week. Next Sunday, we will be live at the same time, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and we're going to be making a, um, a, a pigeon, of course. Of course, of course, we're going to be making a pigeon. So I will see you guys next week. Yes, and if you try refreshing it really quick, I just want to make sure people are able to put in names. Charles. Yeah, you guys got you you guys are doing it. You guys are suggesting names. Great. Um and yeah, just choose the top. I'll just choose four of them. I'm just going to share it again in the chat real quick. All right. Well, pasta la pizza. Happy hooking. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you. And um yes, this little nerd will see you guys. Oh no, I forgot a belly button. Hold on. Oh, wait. Did I forget a belly button? I did. I don't want to forget a belly button. Let me just add that real quick. I'm just going to add this really, really quick. Because we don't want to forget a belly button. The poor dude. I think he's a freak. There we go. There we go. Last minute belly button fix.
mean, I guess I don't really know how these guys are created in, you know, in the, in canon. How do, how do, how are myconoids created? Probably not birthed. So they probably don't really have be belly buttons, but I think it's fun to add a belly button. If I can get that in there. There we go. All right. There we go. Fixed it. Got a belly button. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, guys. Pasta la pizza. Happy hooking. Bye. Here, wait. We'll have. We'll have Jack Gurgle say hi. Or bye. Gotta do that. Bye. Bye. Yum, 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 yum. No, no. There we go. I did it.